Hey, you guys, I believe that we are live. All right, so let me just give me one second here to try and make this a little bit better to look at. Yeah, give me one second. Apologies for my little dog yapping in the background like she always does. Eh, you know. All right, so we are gonna do this. New movie recording. Sorry, I should have done this before. Bear with me, guys. We are damn near ready to go. Float on top. Bring it down to its smallest size. All the little hacks we do here to try to make these live videos cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and get jiggy with it. So, guys, this is an important one. This is a good one because, uh, you know, it is a fact that people drink alcohol and um, it is not really my intention to try to sway you one way or the other, right? Like, you want to drink alcohol? Cool. Let's figure out how to do it the right way. The Justice Scholar method to responsible drinking. You don't want to drink alcohol? That's great. Like, honestly, that's super cool. Like, I, I totally admire you for that. So I'm not really trying to get you to start or stop. I'm just going to give you the right information you need to make better decisions. Okay? Um, I think that part of growing as an adult, um, developing as an adult, is a series of belief breaking. And I've mentioned this in, my, in the, in the um, presentation from last week. But you know, we, we come into this world with a bunch of baggage, right? We come into this into adulthood with all these ridiculous belief systems that our that our parents bestowed upon us, that our little communities gave us, that our teachers and friends and and uh, role models gave to us, and most of them turn out to not be true, right? Um, alcohol is kind of one of them. Having a nightcap, um, you know, throwing a few back, again no reason to feel bad if that's what you do it's cool um i'm not gonna lie i i have wine I, I love wine as a matter of fact i love the history of wine i love exploring different regions of spain or italy or france through their wine you know going to a cool wine shop and like it's like a little history lesson and just like this wine was made in the southwest region of da 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 da, da and then, you know it's it's an experience and it's really nice and so what I want to do is show you guys how we can, first of all, get super clear on alcohol and its effect on us because it does have an effect, right? And then arm you with the right information so you can make better decisions, okay? So with that being said, let's get it, shall we? Cool. So is drinking bad? Well. It's, that's a loaded question, right? Like, is it? Yeah, it is, right? And I think that we should just face that fact and not try to rationalize and not try to justify why it's okay or pretend like there's some sort of medicinal benefit to alcohol. It's poison, right? So let's just admit that. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's just accept that. If we're going to indulge, there is going to be a consequence, right? Like, that's just right. That's just what it is, right? Um, would a person objectively, just objectively, take your own bias, take your own opinions away? Would a person objectively be better off without it in their life? Signs point to yes. With that said, life is short, and does the occasional indulgence just make it more interesting? Give us something to enjoy and to look forward to and spice up our life in general. Again, signs point to yes. Does the occasional consumption of alcohol directly correlate to eating a burrito at 2 a.m.? Again, you guessed it. Signs point to yes. <laughs> so it's a complicated question one that you need to make for yourself, whether you want to do it or not. Um, and now what we're going to do is talk about how to optimize that, okay? 
So one of the biggest questions is there's just a lot of um, dogma, a lot of like black and white, wrong or right, don't do this, do this, thinking when it comes to alcohol. One of them is, will alcohol make me fat, right? First off, there's there like you can certainly go low calorie alcohol. For example, like um, a, a, like a shot of vodka is you know eighty calories, right? Or like one of those like truly spark like hard ciders or something. They got them down to like eighty calories a can. But there is no such thing as a zero out calorie alcohol because alcohol is caloric. And so if you're if you're not if you're not tracking your alcohol, but you're also trying to make good choices like vodkas and sodas, make no mistake that if you drank five or six vodka and sodas, that's still five or 600 calories you're dumping onto your um, day in addition to the food you've already eaten. So when you, someone asks, will alcohol make me fat? Really, it's like, are we talking about a single drink that you've already planned for and budgeted for your calories? Or are you just, are you binging on a six pack because um, any calorie will make you fat. If you ate too much quinoa, it'll make you fat because it's calories. And at a certain point, you reach your caloric limit that your body can burn. Anything in excess of that is going to be stored as body fat. So it doesn't really matter what vehicle you get your calories from. If you consume too many calories, regardless of how you do get them, it will turn into body fat. Right. So that's the number one thing we all have to understand is to get rid of to not go down the rabbit hole of specificity, but look at it in a more general context of an excess of calories is going to accumulate body fat. And that's really all there is to it. And it just so happens that there's quite a few calories in alcohol, especially wine, especially beer, especially whiskeys and bourbons. Um, and so a few of those can really stack on hundreds and hundreds of calories that you are probably going to be then in a surplus and therefore burn fat or uh, build fat, excuse me. And of course, alcohol uh, lowers one's inhibitions too, right? So not only are you consuming five or 600 calories by drinking a few drinks, but then after a few drinks, that 2 a.m. burrito doesn't sound like such a bad idea anymore. But maybe, we, maybe you eat your 2 a.m. burrito at 10 p.m. Doesn't really matter. Point is, is that it lowers one's inhibitions to lead to overconsumption of food, snacks, all kinds of things, right? So. Will alcohol make you fat? Sure, sure, just like anything you do too much of, right? Now, with that being said, can we booze and lose, right? So we understand that too much of anything is gonna make us fat. So can we drink alcohol and still lose weight? And the answer is yes. Yes, my friend, as a matter of fact, we can. And as a matter of fact, I have done it. I have put myself through this theory and perfected the um, Justin Scholard method to responsible drinking, right? And here's how it goes. We're gonna go three steps to losing weight without giving up booze, okay? Step number one, this is the most important thing. This is something you're gonna hear me say constantly, no matter what topic we're talking about, is that you as an adult must decide ahead of time what you're gonna eat, drink, and do, and then follow the damn script, okay? So step number one is you need to decide how much you're gonna drink ahead of time, okay? You gotta put your adult pants on and you gotta make a real adult decision for yourself here, okay? You can't wing it, right? You can't plan for the best and then go completely off the rails, right? That's lying to yourself, that's denial. That is literally denial, saying that, Oh, nope, I'm gonna have a sober weekend. Watch me. I'm gonna build my MyFitnessPal or my calorie tracker out ahead of time. I'm gonna build it perfectly to all my hit my proteins, my carbs, and my fats. And then I'm gonna not drink anything. And then Saturday night, you're gonna put a whole bottle of wine down after you already ate your whole days of food. And now you've consumed 2,500 calories for the day and you're over your limits, right? And then you feel guilty and you feel like you can't trust yourself and then you don't even try to plan the next weekend because you know you're not gonna do it anyways. So we reverse that and instead, just be real with yourself. If you're gonna drink a bottle of wine on Saturday night, 
admit it. Just admit it, right? Like, again, I'm not here to tell you you should or shouldn't do it. I mean, should you not drink it? Probably shouldn't drink it, especially if you're trying to lose weight. If you know you're going to anyways, what's the next best decision? Logically speaking, it's to plan for it and it's to prepare for it, okay? So, if you are going to do that, you need to pl plug it in your calorie tracker ahead of time. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up. A bottle of wine is 600 calories, all right? So if we're just talking wine here, right? Because I'm a wine, I like wine. I don't really drink beer. I, I really could care less for liquor. But I like to have a glass of wine or two, especially on the weekends, especially when we go to dinner. So if, for example, you decide as, an, as a mature adult who's rational and real with themselves and not lying to themselves, but you decide I'm going to drink 12 ounces of wine. you need to know that that's 300 calories, okay? So if you're on a diet and you're only allowed 1,500 calories for the day, or you're putting yourself on a 1,500 calorie budget for the day, and you've decided ahead of time on Friday, Friday, you decided that Friday night, I'm gonna drink a half a bottle of wine. That's 300 calories. So what you need to do then is make sure you pull back 300 calories from your food and make room in your meal plan for that day for the wine. Now, simply enough, we use, we're gonna count alcohol as a carbohydrate. The jury's out, people say, well, it's metabolized in the liver, therefore it's fat, da, 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 da. We're gonna go with carbs, okay? So it's the easiest thing to, to balance the calorie checkbook, so to speak. So in this example, if we're gonna drink 300, if we're gonna drink a half a bottle of wine, that's 300 calories. What's 300 divided by four? 75. So that's 75 grams of carbohydrates, right? So that means you are chewing 75 grams less of carbohydrate that day, and instead you're choosing as a mature adult, you're gonna consume those 75 grams of carbohydrates via wine, okay? And that, my friend, is how your net calories for the day remains the same the vehicle you're using to distribute those calories is changing instead of chewing you're drinking but you know as long as we're not talking about an every night occurrence this is an occasional thing that you're doing that is a very mature decision you're making that will keep your calories at the same level that you've assigned yourself which will keep you in a caloric deficit which will keep the fat loss process going okay and that my friend is how you booze and lose i wrote three steps and then I typed out five, and then I forgot to edit the top banner to five steps. So step number four of <laughs> the three. So anyways, I already talked about that. You remove it from your calories for the day. And step number five, and the most important step, and this all comes back to just don't fool yourself, all right? Like, don't expect yourself to just all of a sudden, um, you know, be this person that you – aren't going to be overnight, right? So if you plug in six ounces of wine, like, oh, I'm only gonna have, I'm only gonna have one glass and you're putting a whole bottle down, you're not holding yourself to the limit you've assigned. So be realistic, push the limit up, drink a bottle, get it out of your system, but, but account for it and be an adult and hold yourself to that limit, right? Make a realistic limit and then, damn it, hold yourself to it. And don't binge. Don't don't have that one and then get a little loose and then be like, oh, well, I want five more. Hold yourself to the limit, all right? That is the key. That's where the rubber meets the road. Self-discipline, man. Be realistic with your expectations and then have a little self-discipline, all right? So those are the three steps to losing weight without giving up booze. Decide ahead of time how much you're going to drink. Look up the calories for that alcohol of choice, would be it whiskey, vodka, wine, beer, whatevs. Figure out how many calories it is. If you're going to drink six ounces of bourbon, all right, how many calories is that? Plug it in your fitness tracker, your calorie tracker, figure it out, divide that by four. That's how many grams of carbohydrates you need to pull away from your diet now for that day to balance the checkbook, so to speak. Enter it in. And then be a freaking adult and hold yourself accountable to actually only drink that. How often should I do this? Well, we know alcohol is poison. 
I drink alcohol. I poison myself willingly. Okay? I am not trying to live in a bubble here. Uh, life is to be lived. And sometimes eating chocolate, having a pizza, drinking some wine, um, you know, is part of the thrill of being a human, right? We don't, like, there are people who don't do any of that. And that's cool. Good for them. But if you're watching this, you probably are more like me. And we want to learn how to work through life's varieties and not abstain from them, right? Um, and so then the next level for that is, well, then how do we do this as good as we possibly can um, while still honoring you know, our commitments in life, like losing weight and being healthy and but still weaving in some fun every now and then. And this is how we do it, okay? So how often should we do it? Once a week at most, you know, like if you're finding yourself putting it back a few days a week, you know, just like being real with you, you should probably check yourself. You should challenge yourself on why you feel you need to do that. So like if you're drinking more than once a week, why? What are you getting out of it, right? Example, you might say, well, I have all these things, right? I have a party, I have a birthday party, I have an event I'm going to. Um, there's a wedding. Well, let me challenge you on this. Are you going to that event because you want to celebrate the union or the marriage or the birthday of so-and-so? Or are you going there to drink? Right? Because if the truth is that you're actually going there to celebrate the union or the birthday or whatever, then what does alcohol have to do with it? Right? But if you get that feeling, and you got to be honest with yourself, because we've all—if you're—if you drank, if you've been drunk, in your life, we all know that feeling that tinges up, that little familiar feeling that hits us right here. Ooh, and there's alcohol, and you just—and you want that first drink, right? If that little—if that is going off, you're feeling that little feeling on the way to these events, then I would check yourself, right? Anytime you look forward to something, like if, anytime you're craving an indulgence, that's your first sign that you should probably create some space around it, right? And not mindlessly hurl yourself into these scenarios where you are essentially putting yourself in harm's way to binge, right? Because that is probably the seedlings of something a little bit above my pay grade, so to speak, um, more of a of a dependency that I'm not qualified to speak on, but I would just challenge yourself on, you know, when you do feel that, or if that is why you're going to these events, you know, it's something to think about. Now, with that being said, you know, um, once a week, you kind of have a few, hey, you know what? You got everything else figured out. You're, you're, you're washing your diet, you're hitting your workouts, you're drinking your gallon of water a day, you're hitting your steps you know what, you're probably pretty far ahead of the game and I wouldn't worry too much about it, right? Okay, so now, next thing, side effects, right? And this kind of ties back into the last slide a little bit here. It's just like, the, you, you, you can't come out, you can't poison yourself and come out unscathed. And that's a choice that we're making as responsible adults to, to, in, to indulge in a little booze here and there. Just know that you can do your best to optimize the situation, but you're never going to come out of it unscathed. And obvious ones are hangover. And I'm 36 now, and I have if I if I, I, I there's a there's a clear line for me, <laughs> three and up. And I am if I have if I have that fourth drink, which I don't do that often these days. If I have that fourth, I am the ne oh man, it is bad. It is so bad, and it's bad for a whole day. 10 years ago, I, would, I could drink 12 and it wouldn't, I would feel nothing. Now it's a whole different story. And um, because of that, I just, I'm afraid to even drink that. I can't even do it. I couldn't even imagine waking up hungover. There's too much going on, too much riding, too much on my shoulders. And I would imagine there's a probably similar in your life too. There's too much riding on you being your best, you know? Like you gotta show up. You gotta show up to life. You got family, you got career, you got responsibilities. You can't be fucking nurse in a hangover. It's like, you know, that's just a bad look, right? So that's the obvious one. But then like even just on like a more subtle level, I mean, long term, it's going to disrupt your sleep. You know, like it's very proven at this point that 
even one drink messes up your variable heart rate, which is an indicator of just like your nervous system, your parasympathetic nervous system, and your sympathetic nervous system that are, should be in balance as far as signals to your heart goes. But the more you drink, the more your sympathetic nervous system takes over, which is your fight or flight, stressed out, and it's, and it's messing up your, your variable heart rate. And that's going to disrupt your sleep. Um, and it's just a biomarker for health that we need to keep in balance, right? And there's more stuff, information on that about variable heart rate that's interesting read. You guys should take a look at it. But that's one of them, right? And then there's also just like an interpersonal relation, relation um, is like, irritability right like if you're always kind of like got this background hum because you've been drinking somewhat regularly you're going to be less tolerant you're not going to have that je ne sais quoi that like special something that charm that that like electric touch to everything that Midas touch where you can weave through crowds and be the you know this, you're not going to have that charisma you're going to be dull down you're 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 going to your, your fire is going to be diminished if you're drinking too much and too much is relative to you and you're the one that has to decide what that means but something to create awareness around right um also like lowered inhibition aka that 2 a.m burrito right even one drink could lead to just some snacking at night which may not seem like a big deal but i'm here to tell you as a coach who's been doing this for 16 years it is the details that matter and so that one drink was 150 calories and then that one drink led to a handful of popcorn which is another 150 calories and then you had a quick little bite of the chocolate bar which is another 100 and all of a sudden you're at 450 calories for the day over your target if you even have a target and you do that at, at three four times a week that's an extra 1500 calories a week you know what i mean you see where this goes it's extra 6,000 calories a month right an extra 70,000 calories a year it happens that just so happens to break down to 20 pounds of body fat See how this works? And it's just that little thing every night that you're doing mindlessly that doesn't really move the needle in any 24 hour window. But when you look back on a year and you're like, should I gain 20 pounds this year? I don't understand. I eat pretty well. I exercise. I just had that one drink, a little snack here and there. But that extra 500 calories a day times by 365 days is 10 pounds or is 20 pounds of fat, right? So awareness is the answer right we always have to keep everything in perspective and nothing's off the table actually it's just a matter of how do you make it fit into the overall scheme and then of course alcohol on a repeated basis is going to lead to diminished sex drive right and really what does diminished sex drive indicate that just that is your that is your frontline indicator of hormonal imbalance right so for men that would be testosterone and even for women too that could be testosterone um, not quite the same extent, but relatively speaking, right? But for guys, for sure. Um, and then of course, you know, you're gonna feel like crap during your workouts because you didn't get good sleep and because your, your hormones are out of balance, right? And just in general, a lowered zest for life, right? We want that, we want that spark, we want that je ne sais quoi. We wanna be, we wanna have, be charismatic, right? And it all starts with keeping everything in balance. So guys, so that's it. That's my dog, Red. Um, that's the Prezzo on alcohol, the sobering truth, how to um, drink responsibly with the Justin Scholar method. And what is the method? In, in short, you are an adult. You must decide ahead of time how much you're gonna drink then hold yourself to, to actually only drink that with the caveat of don't, being, don't be unrealistic. If you're gonna drink a bottle of wine, then add a damn bottle of wine in your calorie tracker and make sure it fits with your total allotment for calories. Well, Justin, what if I don't know how many calories I should eat? Well, that's where you're going to have to hire someone like me to help you figure that out, right? Um, so with that said, guys, if you need some help, if you want to figure out how you can booze and lose, if you want to figure out how to weave the, 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 the occasional indulgences in life, keep it fun, keep your life interesting, eat the foods that you enjoy and still lose weight, through a realistic nutrition plan, a, a realistic, sensible exercise plan. If you wanna be like the people who you see in the group that are losing 20 to 30 pounds in 12 weeks, hit me up, shoot me a DM, drop a comment below. It says you're interested and you want more information and we'll get, we'll, we'll get in touch with you. Um, this stuff works, so I'm not making this up. Um, and um, I'd be more than happy to hop on a call and figure out how we're gonna make this work for you. 
Okay, guys, there you go. Have a fantastic Thursday. Hope that helps someone out there. And uh, drop a comment anyways and just let me know that you like this and that you saw it and you want more of this stuff. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.